All right. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to stream. Uh, Art fight has been a thing since I was a kid, so a long time. <laughs> hello, everybody. How are we doing today? Hey, so true. Loaf of turtle. <laughs> Hello everyone, are we vibing? How's the energy today? How are y'all doing? Hope you're all doing well. Two for you? I hope it's 2 p.m. and not 2 a.m. for you. Exactly 1 a.m. Uh, why are you awake? Yes and well, that's good. I'm glad you're doing well. Oh. <laughs> 3 p.m. for you. Love that doodle. Thank you. I, <laughs> I, I have no, I have no raindrop jokes. <laughs> I can't think of anything to relate. Um, the only thing I can think of is a really obscure song that like nobody knows. <laughs> um, all right, welcome in everybody. As the p.m. Okay, excellent. Um, it's definitely something you could do with rain and streams. Head in my hands. I didn't even think of that. You're so right. Uh, so you can tell I'm tired. <laughs> um, but I hope you're all doing well for today. Today, as the stream title says, is we are going to be talking about realistic rain. How's our realistic rain? So I'm going to do a couple of mini lessons for you. Honestly, the lessons shouldn't take long because I'll be 100% honest. Drawing rain is one of the easiest things ever, especially if you're a digital artist, because it really doesn't evolve much drawing. <laughs> but uh, I'll be going over two different things because that thumbnail, it's, 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 it's just a smidge misleading. Um, but we'll be... Don't worry. We will... Um, work with both. I'll work with what is on the thumbnail and what I think when I think realistic rain. Um, but before we get into that, <laughs> we must do our fun little read because if you didn't know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds and we art nerds have to stick together. So if you're an art nerd too, be sh if you're an art nerd too, be sure to check the links to our social media in the description below and check out our website for our class offerings where you can get gui critique, guidance, and encouragement from our instructors because we're not just a YouTube channel, we are an art school too. So if you'd like to support us, we can keep making free content. Consider supporting us by becoming a YouTube member for exclusive channel perks like emotes and sub badges or supporting us on Patreon for as little as $2 per month where you can get access to tons of perks like my working files, critique sessions, class recordings, and a huge discount on our classes that have a limited amount of spots. So be sure to check those out before they're gone. Other things that the memberships offer, we have exclusive channels on the Discord. Not only are they exclusive, but you guys have, we've started something a little bit new. Uh, we've done crit days. Each instructor, each streamer has their own sort of um, time where they are online for sure, um, where you can get crit on your artwork in the exclusive Discord channels. Uh, me personally, I like to host an hour long sort of crit session where we can all join in a call and you can give me your stuff and I will take a look at it for you. Um, so every week on Wednesdays, that's what I do. Um, so again, members get that fun little perk. Um, pop into the stream and yeah, office hours. Exactly. We've all been given office hours essentially. Um, and mine are on Wednesdays at 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard. Um, and that is when you get to join me in a call. You, know, you can just hang out, chat, and you can give me your artwork and I can give you crit on it. Um, but yes, it is a different time for each instructor, each person. And that is available for members and uh, YouTube members and Patreon members. And before we get into the actual illustration portion of today, we have the submissions. We have the submissions for this month. This month's theme is April showers. That doesn't necessarily mean it is in relation to rain, but just in relation to spring. Um, though I'm also counting it as rain because April showers, rain, makes sense. <laughs> but the first uh, submission that we have today is from Chaotix. Um, beautiful work rendering this one. We love a good fairy in the spring. Um, I... I feel like my next D&D character should be a fairy. I feel <laughs> I feel like I should have one of those. I have a tiny creature. Because um, I think that would be kind of funny. Um, but submissions. Woo woo. Submissions time. Um, also, for those of you who wish to submit your work, uh, you got to join the Discord. Exclamation point Discord. There will be a section in the Discord where each month we have a different theme that you submit your work to. Um, and with that theme, uh, you have a chance to be featured at the beginning of streams. So I've chosen four for us today. 
but yes beautiful work rendering this one chaotix love the warm lighting i love the 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 blending love the color choice well done thank you so much for submitting next one is by chi flame who we've seen a lot of work from um but i love this one i love the super rainy vibe of this i love the the flower umbrella um really really loving uh like how your eyes kind of go to the umbrella first and then you sort of go to those people's eyes down at the bottom really nice way to hone in on that on those two focal points really well done um beautiful beautiful stuff chief flame as always thank you so much for submitting Next piece, we have Squee Squiggle Do. Um, I'm a sucker for any sort of Undertale artwork. <laughs> um, and I love the I love the sort of morning glow um, of this of this piece that we've got here. You can tell clearly you used a, a rectangular brush as well. Very nice. Um, nice and simple way to render out uh, Ivy as well. Um, it really shows how like easy it is to to give the impression of greenery. Um, by doing so little. Well done. Thank you so much for submitting. Last, certainly not least, we have Zema Dragon. This one is definitely me going like, yeah, it's April. <laughs> April showers. We're, we're doing the we're doing the rain. Um, love this piece. I love the silhouette for, with the train behind them. I'm a huge sucker for people being silhouetted by like oncoming like light. I think that those are always really, really cool. I love the 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 concept of those. I love the the silhouette that's caused. I love the just the visual aesthetic of it all. Really cool, really well done. Thank you so much for submitting, and thank you all four of you for submitting to, uh, this week. Uh, Chaotix, Chi Flame, Squee Squiggle Doo, and Zemma. Again, exclamation point Discord if you'd like to submit your work for the upcoming month or for the current month, April showers that is available for all of our discord members to submit and have a chance to be featured on stream all right let's get into ooh, yeah great batch of art to get us started off wonderful beautiful um i'm certain you guys have noticed the kind of asmr tone that my voice has taken off and that's just because my voice has kind of hurt started hurting <laughs> from the first two classes that i've taught um and just the fact that I am very tired. Um, but what is what else is new? You know. Um, hi, Kay. Welcome in. How are you? Oh yes, thank you, Joe. Yes, early bird registration for the summer camps and intensives are here. Exclamation point camps! Exclamation point classes. Um, you can save five percent using uh, code early nerd if you would like to come and sign up for classes that are going to be happening during the summer. Let me just crop this really quickly. All right, so rain. Oh, let me use a different brush. Rain is really funky because a couple ways that you can approach it, right? Is that there's the rain on the, um, there's the rain that's on like the, what do you call it? On the thumbnail, which is like the dew drops that are left on, um, on plants as like a subsequent of, as a subsequent action to uh, rain that has fallen or maybe it's just the morning of spring, right? Are, is Photoshop lagging? <laughs> Please. Please, I'm begging you, don't do this to me right now. So sorry. Let me reboot my program. <laughs> um, but same, same kind of deal. Um, um, what do you call it? We have the dew drops that are left on plants, and then we have actual rain that is falling. Now I'm gonna go over both of them um, because I find that those, both of those, both of those lessons are gonna be really, really short. So I'm like, I can really easily just slot both of those in <laughs> slot both of those into today's stream um so i can give you both of those sort of overviews so allow me to just reopen this file excellent so raindrops we're gonna make this really easy we're gonna start with rain that's falling right because this one is way easier than the other one. So rain that's falling. And 
I'm just gonna make this really simple. We're not really gonna write anything down. I'm just gonna give you a visual demo of what this looks like. All right, I'm gonna blow your minds for those of you who don't know this already. <laughs> I'm just gonna have a guy here. kind of vibing with the rain, doesn't hate it, doesn't love it, you know. That sure is a guy. Uh, what's his name? Um, I don't know, Quinn, what's his name? How am I? I'm doing all right, kiddo. I am just a little tired is all. <laughs> My voice hurts a little bit. I'm asking Quinn specifically. Whatever, what do we... Uh, uh, we get that we get that we get that student privilege here. <laughs> what are we what are we what are we naming this guy? Ran on me by Ariana Grande and Lady Gaga's right there. Bro, I don't I don't know that song. <laughs> is his name is Jeremy? Alright, we agree. Okay, his name is Jeremy. So really, really easy. Alright, I'm gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna pick a lighter color. It can be white, it can be gray. Do not choose blue. I find that blue doesn't really work that well. We're just gonna like, do a bunch of dots. Just place them really randomly around the canvas. All right. Looks like snow right now, but just, tr just trust me. All right, let me cook. Let me a clipping mask so it doesn't go outside. Struggle with rain so much? Don't worry. This is gonna be the, the craziest thing you've ever seen in your life. Alright. Alright, we're gonna draw what looks like snow for now. Alright, just put in a bunch of dots. Try to put them in randomly. Scatter them around. Alright, what we're gonna do? We're gonna go to filter, blur, motion blur. Alright, we're gonna pick whatever angle we want the rain to be going at. Ta da! <laughs> That's it. You just motion blur it and you have rain. So this way you don't actually have to draw all of the raindrops either. Right? Let's copy that so we can make it a bit thicker. Boom. Ta-da! And now they're all really easily going in the exact same direction as well. Now, the fun thing with this method too, I'm pretty sure motion blur is universal. So even though I'm using Photoshop, I'm pretty sure it's universal across all programs. Um, that works way too good. It's the easiest method. <laughs> the easiest method I've ever seen. Um, a really fun thing, I'm gonna do this. Um, I don't usually do this, but I'm actually gonna do it for this one. Uh, the really fun thing that Chi Flame did as well um, and their work, not only did they do that, I can see the motion blurs happening, but they also decided to streak some of this color that came from um, the rest of the piece. So that's another thing you could do. If you really wanted to, you could have some of the the rain kind of streaking off of this person as well if you want that rain to look really really heavy right and that kind of makes it look a bit stronger as well so that's another thing you could do um but if you want really really quick rain you don't want to think about it too much easiest way to do it that's just like me for real so true i think it's gonna be that easy dude it's literally it's so easy Motion Blur is in Sketchbook by Autodesk. Uh, Autodesk Sketchbook is meant to just be a sketchbook. So Autodesk doesn't have a lot of um, tools, unfortunately. It's pretty universal across like um, like stronger programs, I guess is the way that I would put it. Like it, it's definitely in CSP, 100% um, in Krita. Um, I know that like, I know that blurs are pretty limited in like Medibang, but I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, it has a motion blur. Um, like most programs have a motion blur. Um, but that's a, that's a really, really quick and easy way to do it. So let me just write that down for you if you didn't catch that. So draw a bajillion dots like snow. Motion blur to your desired amount. Ta-da! 
<laughs> you know, nice and easy. Really, really simple, right? It's 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 just that easy. <laughs> um, I know Ibis Paint has it. Makes sense. Motion blurs and filters, right? Yep, it's usually in filters. Um, it should be under blur, wherever blur is on your program. For Photoshop, it's filter blur, and then it'll be in that sort of thing. You also have it under, oh, Blur Gallery's different, but Blur, and then it'll be Motion Blur. Motion Blur, it's definitely somewhere on your program. Like, more likely than not, it is somewhere on your program. Traditional artists are sweating right now. I teach digital, so if you want to ask what the traditional artists do, that's that's for Faye. You can ask Faye next time she streams. Um, step three, yay, is exactly. <laughs> um... I think it's just Gaussian emotions, probably it for many though. That makes sense. Yeah, I, I doubt that they'd have like lens, lens blur, like stuff like that. Um. Oh, void. What were you asking? Oh, digital art pens and gloves. Uh, depends on what you're using. I mean, I have a tablet, a full tablet, and it usually comes with it. I used to use Autodesk Sketchbook. I exclusively use Autodesk Sketchbook on like my phone. Like if I'm going out and I'm like, okay, I need to, I know I really want to doodle this really quickly. I'll like use it on my phone, but like I don't use it as a full program. It just doesn't have enough for me. Yeah, pretty much every, like it's one of those like blurs that are like really, really like common. Like you probably have Gaussian and you probably have motion. Like those are the two that you'll most likely have. And if it's not called a Gaussian blur, then it is just called a blur. It's like one of those two. Do I create any comics? I do. Um, okay. But let's go to the harder one. Let's go to Dewdrops. Now Dewdrops, let me grab a reference here really quickly. I'm, I don't want to spend too long on this because I want to get to the actual drawing portion of today. If I'm going to use a free art program, I'd just boot up MS Paint. So true. I added layers to it. I, I don't know, man. I've got the basic MS Paint. I got nothing. How much is your whole equipment? Like, all of my equipment. Okay. So don't use me as a base layer because I have been doing this for like a decade, right? So that was not what I started with, all right? If you want what my starting equipment was, I got a tablet for free because my dad had it and it was older than me. I had a laptop that was like $200 because it was like broken and like half it half used, half used. And then I had a totally 100% legal version of Photoshop, right? That was also free, right? 200 total that was it right and the only reason it was 200 was because i had the computer right so if you've already got a computer you're already there and photoshop costs money but there's so many programs that do not cost money right my tablet was free because it was a hand-me-down right uh, my current stuff my laptop it's broken right my like current setup is thousands of dollars and that's only because you know i've been building it up over time right the tablet that i have right now however right normally it would be maybe 1200 bucks right however i got it used for 300 dollars, right so this is not a this is not a not a cheap tablet right i have a cintiq cintiqs are like the big ones that you get like later in life i have photoshop i have legal photoshop i pay for it every year expensive about 200 bucks right my pc is built right i built i built i my, well okay i bought the parts and then my brother built my pc <laughs> uh, but that's about also about 2000 2200 bucks right so a couple thousand bucks right for all of that there right but this is again don't use me as a baseline there are so many people that like you're reading it right now like people who use csp people who use procreate right csp is a one-time payment and i also have clip studio clip studio that i have though um, I got it on sale and it was 50 bucks, right? And then um, Procreate is like 10 bucks, right? It's something like that. What specs is the PC? I genuinely don't remember. I, my brother just got told me to get a bunch. Of, he's good with hardware. He told me to get a bunch of stuff and he's like, this is the good stuff. And I was like, okay. Um, he, he, he knew how to budget it. And I was like, all right, cool. The only thing that I know is that I have a pretty good graphics card. I have a 2070 Super. That's like all I know. And then I have like like 16 gigabytes of RAM, and then I have um, a terabyte hard drive, and then 500 gig SSD. 
Like, I, I, I don't know anything else out, like outside of that. I'm on a PC, and then I have a tablet that connects to my PC. Um, but what's a great free digital art program? Um, me, personally, when I was using it, Medibang was a pretty good starter just because it works really well with other programs. Like, it's, it's a really easy way for you to kind of trans transfer into something that's paid. Um, I found that Krita is powerful, but Krita is hard to get out of. Um, like, if you are used to something else, Krita is hard to get used to. And if you are used to Krita, then it is hard to get out of Krita. So it's like, if you're using Krita, you're probably using it for life. Um, Made it big was peak free program, yeah, real. I'm an Ibis hater and I will die on that hill. I didn't love Ibis. I didn't hate it. It was just kind of like, I felt like the UI was a bit too, uh, too strange for me. I'm like, when I used it, because especially because it's supposed to be like mobile only, it's like phones and iPads and whatnot only. I'm like, it feels a little too tight. You know what I mean? It's like Procreate is very condensed, but I don't love that it's condensed. It's like, you can see how like maddening Photoshop's UI is. And that's kind of what I like. Um, so that, that's just a very personal thing, though. You see, for a few months when I decided to delete all my art. Yeah, I, I had to teach my Procreate students how to back up their work as well. I'm like, I'm like, don't just have it on the Procreate cloud. <laughs> don't do that. Um, like Procreate and Ibis students. I'm like, save them as actual files on your computer. I'm, I'm too scared to, to save exclusively on the cloud. Okay, so let's do dewdrops. It's enough software talk. Let's do dewdrops. So, hello? Oh. Let's look at this reference really quickly, right? We take a look at all of this. Now, the first thing that we notice, right? It's like, yeah, dewdrops are clear, but they do have a bit of shadow to them. The easiest way that I can tell you, oh, this is how. You shade a dewdrop, right? Again, not too difficult, I don't think. Is let's say you have the circle. This is our dewdrop. Let's say our light source is coming from up here. The sequence, oops, is going to be. like this. It is going to be dark, light, dark. That's essentially the sequence that we're looking at. All right, so the top edge of our dew drop is going to be dark facing our light source. Because essentially what's happening is this dew drop, right? It's not like it's 2D, it's like a 3D thing. And water refracts. It's not totally like see-through. It's not totally that, right? So essentially our light source is hitting a wall. So it's causing a bit of a shadow here, but then it's almost like the light kind of realizes, oh shoot, this is actually see-through. And then it starts to fizzle out. So it gets clear again. But then the same thing happens here. We hit a wall, so we get a bit of a shadow. And then once again, the light realizes, oh shoot, wait, haha, <laughs> we're still in a clear thing. So it fizzles out again. So it's almost like the light is hitting two walls and those shadows are sort of refracting off against each other, right? So really easily what you can do is if we take our light, our, our little, little dew drop here, right? Let's say our light source is coming from here. We sort of understand, okay, we have our light source coming from there. So we start off with the dark. We have the dark side coming in on this side. I'm using a soft round brush because I am lazy. So let's say that we've got that coming in on that side. So we've got a bit of darkness going in on there. Then we also have the light hitting on top of it. So we've got our light section right here. And because it is super bright, it is a sharp, bright object. It is a dew drop. We're going to have a really sharp um like highlight right here because this is very very shiny 
So we're gonna have a really sharp highlight. And then, right outside of it, we're gonna go back into the dark because again, hits the wall, goes, oh, haha, this is still that same dark shadow. And we're gonna add in our shadow again. But then it realizes, oh wait, shoot, this is also still clear, so we can lighten up this shadow a bit, and it's probably not gonna be as intense as you might think. It's gonna be more like that. Ta-da! <laughs> Easy! It's it's one of those things, again, it's like it's like three steps. It's really not that bad. You can even make it a little bit funky and do that sort of stylization if you want. And that makes it a bit funkier, right? All up to you. Whatever kind of vibe you want. I'm like, I personally kind of like doing that. I'm like, I like to add a little bit of that that lightness up here. Just because I think it looks funky. I think it creates sort of like a fun sort of vibe. But yeah, zoom out. Look at that. Wow. Delicious drop. <laughs> You wizard. Yeah. What should I draw after I clean my room? Some dewdrops. But it is nice and simple. So let me... <laughs> Delicious drop. I really want to try those raindrop cakes. Apparently they taste like nothing. And I kind of want to... I kind of want to experience that. So let us once again do my fun little step-by-step. -step. Start with inner shadow. Facing light source. Sharp highlight. Oh my god, highlight farther away. Cast shut. Ta da! Right? Not too bad. I think that's not too bad. I'm like, I feel like, and you saw how fast I did that, right? It's really, really easy. Right? And I zoom out, and that's really convincing. <laughs> right? And it looks pretty similar to these guys. They're not too, too dissimilar to what I just did right there. Right? It is, it's a pretty, pretty easy, pretty easy, um, way, pretty easy thing to follow, methinks. It's not the, not the hardest thing in the world. Um, and hopefully that made sense to you too. <laughs> Just breaking it down into like really, really simple steps. Hopefully that wasn't, that wasn't too hard either. Single dewdrop looks like it's able to quench my first for the next thousand years. I'm kind of feeling like it looks like, you ever seen those like glass stones that people make? Hang on, glass. Um, stone. You ever see like, yeah, like these things, they look so eatable. You ever, you ever see like these things? You probably saw them at like your grandma's house or something and you're like, oh my God, I love them. These are like my gemstones. I will collect them like eggs. I, that was my vibe when I was a kid, you know? Reminds me of candy, right? These, right? They were so eatable, right? Forbidden Smarties, a hundred percent. And I would like, I would want to eat these so bad. You're not supposed to eat them? No. These are like so like, <laughs> they're they're just glass, but like I loved them. I had so many of them and I would collect them and I would pretend that they were like dragon eggs because I was a kid. <laughs> Forbidden skin. Everyone had the same childhood. It's so true. All right, let's start a new file. My dad would put them in our fish tank. Uh, I know that they're probably not great for fish, but they are such a vibe, you know what I mean? They're definitely like not amazing for fish, but like it's okay. We we've grown older. We know this. Bye, Jeremy. Yes, bye, Jeremy. All right, friends. As we voted on the poll, um, we said that I am going to draw some raindrops now. Now, friends. I'm gonna, this is your one and only warning. This is your one and only warning. If somebody asks me, whoa, is this real? Is this actually like, you're, you're, you're sounding like kind of real right now. All right. I'll say like, yes, this is totally real. 
right? This is 100% real. And I'll start to write slash J on the canvas. Slash J means joke. It is a joke. What I am saying is not true, but I will completely act as if it is completely true. All right. So I will continue to say, yeah, yeah, no, what I'm saying, like you definitely, like you probably just missed what it was, was on TV, right? Like you definitely just didn't see it, right? Now, this is your one and only warning. I will continue to write this until I am done reassuring the individual. And this is what you will see. And this is how you will know that I am not being totally serious. But I will continue to act as if I am totally serious because I like that bit and I think it's funny. All right. That is your one and only warning. And that is all that we are going to be. That is the only thing that I will be saying to preface this. Yeah, same firm is still playing D&D session. He goes, hear me out. You're going to be put in a witch trial. That's vibes. You know what? That's so true. Corn was kind of put on a witch trial, but... Unintentionally, though. <laughs> kind of humor. Already cackling. What I walk into? Uh, nothing. We're just, um... I'm just drawing raindrops. So this next part of the stream is the illustrative portion. So we are going to be drawing raindrops. Now, again, um... I already gave you a tutorial. We're going to be focusing on dew drops, though, uh, by comparison to rain that's just falling, because this is like, I, I could just do that in two seconds. That's no fun. So we're going to be focusing on raindrops. Are the raindrops going to be like baby clouds? Um, I don't know. I mean, like, they didn't really specify where they came from. Like, they kind of just said that they showed up, you know, they just like fall from the sky. And they're like, yeah. It's like sometimes you wake up and they're in your yard and it's like a oh shoot got to get rid of the got to get rid of the raindrops now because if you don't then they might eat your cat or something but like it's just one of those things you know happens kind of rarely but if you get the right kind of raindrop it's like you gotta get rid of them you know it's like suddenly like it, it's similar to like like ticks or like aphids you know if you have too many aphids you gotta get like ladybugs to hunt them if you have too many raindrops you gotta you know, you gotta bring out, like, a torch or something so they can evaporate. Can I see your face? Just go through the channel. It's there. Not the car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because they're, they're, like, invasive is, is what, uh... Because I watched another, like, late night Nat Geo and they were saying, like, it's like, oh, you gotta get rid of range. You know how, like, you have to, like, squish um like snail eggs if you come across them like you gotta like get rid of raindrops if you come across them because if if you don't then they'll like they're really bad for like plants and like the ecosystem so nobody really knows where they came from they're just like bad for you and like nobody really understands why Obsessed with Light Light Not Geo. I'm not really obsessed. It kind of just sometimes comes on when I'm not looking for it. It only ever comes on when I'm not looking for it. Because it'll be like, I'll be watching something else. It's like, I could even be watching YouTube. Like, sometimes it's on the TV. Sometimes it's on my computer. And, like, at a point, like, it just kind of starts to play. And I'm like, oh, shoot. Awesome. Another episode. And then I can vibe with it. But it's like, it's one of those channels that you just can never find, you know? It's like, it pops up sometimes. And you're like, oh, okay. Because I'm living with this now. Yeah, they were talking about like how mysterious raindrops are. It's like nobody really knows where they came from. Just one day they started falling from the sky and like everybody just kind of knows them as like a really invasive species, you know? Like platform nine and three quarters. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm Geo, but unfortunately not Nat Geo. That's okay. Maybe not maybe late night Nat Geo will visit you in one night. Why did the raindrop gain legs? I guess it I guess it's a phenomenon that hasn't happened to you yet. Like I said, like, it, they're invasive, but they're rare, right? So it's like, they're not, like, gonna, like, show up just, like, all willy-nilly. 
Like, if you have, like, a lot of plants, it's like, maybe you maybe you catch the raindrops as they, like, show up in the morning, but, like, they might not always be there, you know? You think you saw a rat king the other day? Oh my god. Were you able to get away? You like Hunter Hunter? It's my Roman Empire. <laughs> Better protect the garden. You gotta. Because, like, it's like not only are they invasive, like, they're bad for, like, wildlife, they're bad for your pets. It's like you really, they're kind of acidic. So it's like they can really uh, disrupt the balance, like, the pH balance of your water. And that can, like, really hurt your plants. It's like they're, like, pH, like, four or something. Which is, like, really bad. That's super acidic. Roman Empire is so real. Yeah. <laughs> what can I do to get a good drawing tablet? I think most drawing tablets are pretty similar. If you've never had one before, then just get a cheap one to start. Don't start with a good one. Start with a cheap one. This is too green. Fun fact, you notice how I'm kind of getting close to yellow, but this still feels green. Just trust me when I say if you are picking greens, lean towards yellow. Don't go directly to green. If you pick right here, this looks super radioactive, right? You are better off going towards a yellow. Just as like a like a like a pro tip. <laughs> Can I use them as lemon juice? I don't think so. Because, like, they don't really die unless you, like, evaporate them. So, like, what would happen is, like, they would just kind of wriggle inside you forever. Or maybe they would take over your body. Who knows? They didn't say anything about, like, what happens if you ingest them, so... What if I do if I want what if I do want my leaves to be radioactive? That's that's on you, man. Yeah, no problem. Sounds like the fun actually. <laughs> Less responsibility for me. I don't know, man. I, I feel like that's a bit of a risk I'm not willing to take. Like considering like what I saw it do to like other wildlife, I don't think you want that in your body, man. It was it was not good. Like, it's, it's kind of TOS, so I'm like, I'm not going to talk about it on stream, but like, it was like, not good. Like, what they did. But I want them to control me. I don't think you do. Like, I'm, I'm okay. I'm just saying, like, it's, it's one of those things, like, I can't even joke about it. It's like one of those things, like, I saw what it did to like a cat, and I'm like, I don't want that to happen to a person, you know? Like, I can't imagine what it would do to a person. <laughs> High pitched little voices, like when rain goes so hard, it sounds like screaming. It's like, well, because like the clouds scream, right? So it's like, it, it, maybe it's also the raindrop screaming, you know? Like if it, maybe the clouds are getting hurt by the raindrops. Maybe that's why the clouds are so angry all the time, you know? Maybe that's part of the reason. think homes with children are safe from rain because of some weird song or charm chant they sing about rain going away no okay so of like they were talking about that like they were talking about like how like the the rain rain go away chant it was like um oh my god it, it was like a it's like similar to like how you say like oh cats have nine lives it was like a it's like a myth right it's like he chanted it's like oh rain rain go away and it'll get the raindrops to go away but it's actually a myth right and like if you if you do try to use that as like a line of defense, like you're you're a duck and you're like a sitting duck, right? You're not like safe from anything. So like it's one of those things where you have to be aware, of like oh, it's like yeah, you can sing it, and it's like a cute little rhyme, but it's actually not gonna do anything for you. You know what I mean? Like it's like you gotta just gotta be like careful about it.
The real question is, do I keep this background gray or do I like pick a color? Oopsie doopsie. Or do I pick a color? Because I'm like, on the one hand, I'm like, I could make this like background like a color. But on the other hand, I kind of like leaving it gray. <laughs> I think it's kind of fun. <laughs> when I was a kid, I thought raindrops were pretty cute and didn't understand why my mom never let me keep one. So I snuck one in one night and it destroyed my mom's garden. She was pissed, learned my lesson. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's why it's like they, they try to keep kids in from outside the rain. Like, it's rare if, like, these these raindrops will, like, come and grab you. But, like, you know, better be safe than sorry. Maybe a warmer cool gray. Let's try. Maybe a cool gray actually would look nicer because this is very neutral. Mmm. I am kind of digging the cool gray. Let's go with it. My guys are honestly being pink. I'm not doing pink. <laughs> Staying in the rain too long, I got really sick one day. I couldn't stop sweating. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe maybe then you did sit in like a like a proper rainstorm. It's bad. Like I, like again, like it's pretty TOS, like what I saw, so I'm like I can't repeat what I saw, but like it was it was rough watching watching that happen to that cat. Do you hear the part where they talked about umbrellas? Basically, if you open one inside, you're inviting the rain to come in. That's crazy. I didn't know that. I was like, I, I feel like I, I missed half of it because like, you know how like when the program ends and then like you just can't stop yourself from falling asleep and then you wake up and you're like, oh shoot, it's morning now, you know? It's like how it kind of forces you to sleep. Like I don't, I, I guess I didn't catch it or I don't remember it. That's crazy though. Maybe that's why like they say opening an umbrella inside is bad luck and they let you in your they let you let them in their ass <laughs> that'd be that's kind of crazy <laughs> if that's like what it means that's nuts okay let's do some painting or actually let's do some lighting really quickly Sorry, don't mind me as I try and figure out how I want this lighting to work. <laughs> okay, cool. Like vampires, but umbrella is the invitation, so true. <laughs> The raindrops the children of the clouds no because like they, they didn't actually like talk about that which is like really interesting i'm like you'd think that they'd have some kind of like relation right but like they didn't actually like mention it what if it's like some crazy conspiracy wouldn't that be like nuts <laughs> i'm like trying to like cover up that they're related in some way Cause like, you know how we have to be like respectful to the clouds. Hi Geo's cat. I don't know if it's funnier to think that one on the right is climbing up or slipping down. I like to think that he's slipping. <laughs> he's falling, help him. You can't type me neither. It's just a default Photoshop brush? Depends. Which one? Is it the one that I'm using right now? Because then no. <laughs> 
apologies if I ever go kind of quiet, because that just means that I'm sort of focusing on what I'm doing. Because rendering, I haven't rendered in a really long time, so I'm a little bit rusty. Don't mind me. Let's try this one. Let's try this brush. See if this one feels a little bit nicer. Mm, that is fun. Happens when one of these falls to the ground, does it die? No, no. So the only way you can kill them is if they evaporate. So like you have to, like if you've ever find them in your garden, what you have to do is you have to like, um, you have to like bring out like a torch or like a flamethrower or something or like something really hot that can like really help to evaporate the water. Because if not, then they just end up getting absorbed into the soil and they become invasive and that kind of thing, you know? And then they like multiply, right? Because then it's just like they're absorbing other like liquids and it makes them like stronger so you have to like get rid of them via like like proper like evaporation right because because essentially like they are still water right it's not like they're not water they are still like as as a whole they are like a liquid that behaves really similarly to water right so you can still evaporate it it still has the same evaporation temperature right 100 degrees celsius right so as long as you get to that temperature you're like good you know All right, clarinet, I... Okay, so don't start with one with a screen, okay? You're gonna want to start with one that does not have a screen, okay? Because the ones with screens, you're not gonna find one for under, like, $500, okay? The screen tablets are really expensive. And especially if you... Like, I assume you're just starting out, right? If you have never touched digital art before, do not start with something that's really expensive. Because if you find that you don't really like it, right, then you're gonna have... You're, what, like, $200 in the hole and... And like then you're like okay well now what do I do right so like try to start with something cheaper I promise you it'll like just because you have something more expensive does not make you better I'm like some of my favorite like traditionally some of my favorite pencils were like three cents <laughs> you know they're like not expensive so like it really is not the materials that make the artist it is the artist that makes the artist once you're a bit more bougie then you can definitely like spend more but like i highly recommend starting with something that's a lot cheaper Personally, I still use one without a screen. It's better for my back. Yeah, I've also found that too. It's like people with using ones without screens. It's like a lot better for your back. Found out you can put them in a blender and drink them. It has side effects. Well, I mean, I get it. They're like a liquid, right? It's it's like, again, I don't know what happens when you like a person ingest them, but I saw what happened with a cat and I don't want to see what would happen with a person personally <laughs> you know all screen tablets have a non-screen feature though right yeah you can just turn off the screen like it's like you don't actually have to use it with the screen it's like you can always just turn it off but like Again, if you're just going to turn off the screen, then what's the point, right, of getting a screen tablet? You might as well, like, rather than spending hundreds of bucks on a screen tablet, you might as well just spend, like, 30 on a non-screen one. Been loving using a chisel brush recently. It's just so fun. <laughs> I've used too much brain power. I guess I'm all arted out. I have no ideas. That's super real. Just like stop drawing then. It's one of those things like if you are just completely out of ideas and you're just staring at a canvas, just stop. Because you're gonna just kind of keep on like banging your head against the wall and there's like no point in that.
Really cute idea for the monthly challenge. So I finish it, good luck. Wanted to make something rainy, but I'll do it later. Maybe I'll add a background to my statues and add rain next week. Go for it. Dude, I just gave you a bunch of warnings. Don't like, <laughs> don't drink them. How did you find them? I only have my motivation to draw my OCs at 12 a.m., but only with digital art. That's real. I have been mostly just like. Um, at least I don't know what it tastes like. No. <laughs> They're acidic, so I assume that it's really like sour. Maybe pickled. My granny is to make them all pickled and put them in a special soup. I don't think so. <laughs> They're just water. Can you pickle water? I <laughs> get a Jeremy in the background for a scale. I mean, they're just the size of raindrops. This is like a leaf, right? So it's like they're this big compared to a leaf. Honestly, that's pretty big. <laughs> if they're that big compared to like a leaf, it's pretty large, I think. giant Jeremy. He's just in the background. Like, he's just like... <laughs> Hang on. I can use a different one. He's just like... <laughs> he's just... <laughs> like that. <laughs> he's just staring at them from behind. <laughs> I have a hard time turning my traditional art into digital art. When I draw on paper, it feels better. Yet for digital drawing, I have to keep planning before you drawing. I don't know why. Especially if you, as somebody who trans, uh, went from traditional to digital, and like even still, I back and forth between the two. It's it is a it is a challenge to get used to one or the other. It's not like a thing that people get used to automatically. Um, so it's just one of those things. Like maybe you do like maybe you just handle traditional better, in which then it's like. You might want to like try sketching traditionally and then rendering digitally, which then it's like some people like to do that more because they like the feeling of like a, what do you call it? They like the feeling of a, uh, of a, of a pencil or a pen more than they like of a digital, digital software. Hello, Colfer. Welcome in. Welcome back. Of course, Eva. Eva, Ava. A drop falls in his eye and chaos and Susan. No, don't, don't, don't wish harm upon Jeremy like this. He's done nothing wrong. to render clear things. <laughs> I don't do it often. We do things that aren't too complicated, I guess, because this is this is not that bad. It's just like a sphere, essentially. <laughs> Partially a sphere, I suppose. Just carrying a sketchbook with you on the go really helps, yeah. I'm like, well, the bags that I carry with me now are not, like, large enough <laughs> for me to carry a sketchbook all the time, but I like to carry, like, a notepad.
Like, I like work of world building, character designing, and planning the character relationships and horrible making a narrative. Is there a way to help? That's, that's just one of those things that, like, you gotta sit down and think about. I mean, maybe you just prefer world building over character, over, like, story writing. You don't need to have a story with a world. Maybe you just have a world. There are tons of different- I'm not a writing teacher, so I can't teach any of that, but... There's, there's lots of different assets you can use, lots of different resources you can use for help on writing. And one of them is not me, because I'm not a writing teacher, <laughs> and I can't teach these things. What happens to the ocean when the raindrops make contact with the salt water? Well, that's the thing, right, is that they, they don't... Like, they don't happen often, right? It's one of those things that, like, happens really rarely. And if you do see them, then, like, they, there's, like, protocols to follow. But, like, most of the time, like, they're not gonna, like, it's not gonna be too bad. In, like, the ocean, like, if they're in the ocean, then they eventually will, like, go back up onto land. And, like, they'll try and find a way to to get in contact with, like, living things on land. Because in the water, they can't, like, coalesce into, like a, like, a physical form because they're too busy being, like, battered around by the ocean, you know? Can you touch them or would they not like that? I mean, it's kind of acidic, so it's a little bit buzzy. Have you ever touched acidic water before? It's, it's, it's... It makes your hand feel kind of tingly. Like, it's like a... When, when I was in high school, we had a, an assignment where we had to, like, um, we had to essentially water a plant. Um, we were in groups of, like, five, I think, and we had to, like, water a plant with different acidi like water acidity. Um, I had pH, I think I had pH 3, something like that. Um, pH 3 or pH 4. So that really, really acidic. And I drip, I, like, spilled a little bit. He, he warned us, our science teacher, he was like, okay, like, you're handling like acidic water try not to spill it on yourself and i spilled a little bit on my hand and it was really tingly i was like oh shoot guess i shouldn't have done that <laughs> whoopsies breaking character for half a second literally not a joke that is something that happened to me <laughs> Is there a stream about animating water? No, not that I know of. Unless I'm proven wrong, Joe. Oh, well, there's water animation. Never mind. <laughs> no way. Static water feels like acid. I know. Crazy revelation. <laughs> they look like in different states and countries. They all look the same. It's just water. It's like they all kind of have this same like water droplet vibe to them, you know? Seeing if this method of illustration is a little easier. It is. That's nice. I'm working in a way right now that's really destructive. Not the best way to paint. Um, but I I enjoy it. I find it fun, fast, so it's why I do it. <laughs> um, I know Iggy and I have a really similar way of painting, and technically, technically, you shouldn't have everything on one layer just because it's like again, it's a very destructive way of working. Um, and destructive art styles are ones where it is very tough for you to go back and edit if you make a lot of mistakes, uh, because it's all on one layer. It's one of those things where it's like, oh shoot, I made a mistake. Well, can't really edit it that well now because it's all gonna affect. If I try to edit this one thing, it's gonna affect something else. So it's it's a pretty destructive way of working, but I find it fun, and it's also like. Um, like, I'm the type of illustrator who doesn't really come back to her illustrations that much, so I'm like, it doesn't affect me that much. But, like, if you are working on a team, this is not the way to work. <laughs> Mom says it's my turn to use the lair. Does she like destruction confirmed? It's true. Okay. 
now. Let's get a little bit fun here. He's a lasso. The best part is adding the highlight. It is always adding the highlight. Whoopsies. Adding the highlight is the best part of rendering. <laughs> yes! It's so satisfying. It feels so nice! I love adding the highlight! <laughs> it just makes it all come together, you know what I mean? I do not animate. No, that's a different instructor. Josh is the animator. <laughs> it just feels it's so satisfying it's just so nice to get to add the highlight and you're like ah oh, yes ties it all together they're such funky little guys like it's so it's so upsetting that they're so acidic but like i i would keep one as a pet if it wasn't so lethal you know Really similar to like the clouds. It's like you don't want to touch the clouds, but like these guys just seem so like like little guys, you know. Are they aggressive? I don't think they are. They're just like if they are presented. They're they're not aggressive per se, like they but they're the kind of like what's the word? Like if they're not aggressive, but they're like conniving, I think is the word. Like they're they're very intelligent. So like they will wait for their opportunity essentially. Like they won't like they won't automatically see you and start to attack. They'll wait until you're like vulnerable. Which, it makes them really, really dangerous, right? It's like, it's like, oh my god, it's like, you know, you know? Mischievous. They're pretty dangerous little guys. They're, they're, they're a little bit, and they're a little bit mischievous, a little bit, uh, a little bit conniving. thing about subsurface is you can put it on literally anything and it makes it look better. That's the secret. <laughs> that's very, very stylistic though. If you if you don't really add a lot of subsurface, then that's fine. Me personally, love adding subsurface. But look at that. It makes that, that shadow look so much cooler. Dude, I just remember the dream I had last night. It's so weird. Dude, I had a weird dream too. Absolutely not so. I've been having a lot of weird dreams lately. I think I said this to like my my first. It was either my first class or my second one for the day. Exclamation point classes. Like I told my students, I was like, I was like, dude, I had like the weirdest dream. It was like, <laughs> well, Quinn, was that my first class or my second class? Because you you're in my first class. Did I tell you guys about my dream? <laughs> Because you were in there early enough to where I, w I if I was telling it, you would have heard it. I was there? Okay, so it was my first class. So it was... It was weird, though. <laughs> Sleep regents, almost, yeah. Was it pH level again? Yeah, they were pH 4. Sorry, I didn't read that. 
I'm not sure about chromatic aberration. I struggle with choosing where it goes. Not chromatic aberration, subsurface scattering. Chromatic aberration is the fun thing where it makes it look like it's glitching out. Subsurface scattering is like adding an edge to the shadow to make it orangey. So generally when you add an edge to your shadow to make it look like sort of glowy, the actual way to use it is if you, um, what do you call it? The actual way to use it is by like detecting like what is like thinner, like thinner parts of the skin. And that's generally where you would put it. Um, because what it is, is it's like the light shining through um, whatever it is that it's touching, right? So in this case, it's like the light going through like the leaves or like the light refracting through them. Like again, me, very stylistic. I'm kind of just adding it for the sake of adding it. Um, technically, this isn't all incorrect either. Leaves do get um, subsurface scattering because they are somewhat translucent. Um, but it's more apparent on, like, skin and stuff like that. You see how much nicer this green feels, though? And the thing, the funny thing is, is that it's, like, yellow, right? I promise you, greens always look better when they lean to yellow. Because they just, they just feel a little bit nicer. Because this, like, actual green, you noticing me putting it on here, it looks blue now right and that's like that's like the difference it's like that green that is directly the center has way too much blue in it and it really makes it feel radioactive using yellows tend to make your greens look way nicer or using yellows tend to make your greens look way nicer is that what i said i genuinely don't know <laughs> what whatever is the correct one that's what it is Reminds me of sunsets. Yeah. Jack Block was in my dream. I was taking some kind of glass and he was like a chaperone teacher. Oh, class. I clearly some kind of chaperone teacher. That's vibes. Um, I had a dream. Oh, I had a dream where I was on a TV show against my will. And it was kind of like those elimination reality shows. There was some kind of thing we had to find a win. Oh, I had a dream that like my brother was like, he was dissatisfied with something. And like, he was like, I gotta... I gotta go and like challenge one of heaven's guard to, <laughs> to, to get what I want. And he went to go and climb up a mountain and myself and my brother's partner and my partner, we all went to go and like stop him from entering like heaven's gate essentially, or like a, like a, like the portal to heaven or whatever. And we were like, no, you can't go in or else if you go in, you can't come back. And he's like, this is something I have to do. He like jumps into the gate and like we weren't able to stop him. And then like, I came back home and my mom was like, where's your brother? And I started crying and I was like, I couldn't stop him from entering the portal to heaven. And that's literally all I remember. <laughs> I also remember that like, if you went through the gate, it was like a carnival with a white tower in the center. And that's literally all I remember. The, the like, it looked like a carnival in the like clown carnival, but carnival and like, if you're Canadian, like the, like the X, um, like the C and E, like that vibe, that kind of carnival where it's like a lot of rides and stuff. Very interesting. Do continue. It's that orange between yellow and green. It is, but this orange is just straight orange. It's like it's like between the yellow and orange kind of on the slider but there is a little bit of orange and it doesn't it make it look like more luminous it makes it look more more funky you should have gone with him bro i was it was my dream me i knew not to go through the gate <laughs> dream me was smarter i was like i'm not doing that i know i won't win so sorry for the sound of the the motorcycle outside by the way we have neighbors with motorcycles <laughs> And it is very hot in this room, and I will not be closing the door. <laughs> not be closing the window. Do they grow when the air is more humid? No. If the air is more humid, it's less likely that they show up. Because, like, then there's, there's a chance that they'll, like, evaporate. So then, like, they don't want to be around if that's going to happen.
like they were saying like they fall with the rain right but it's like really rare that they do because they're like not connected to the clouds or like they don't seem to be connected to the clouds so like they kind of just like fall when they can Which is really interesting. You'd think that they'd be related to the clouds, right? Like, just based on what we know about clouds. Like, you know, they're both evil. Both, like, they scream when they fall. Right? It burns when you touch them, right? They're so similar, but, like, they're they're apparently not related. I'm like, that feels a little bit weird to me. I'm like, I feel like they are related and there's something that they're not telling us. But, like, <laughs> you know. If I'm right, you'll know. I won't be back for my next stream, I guess. But, whatever. I'm sure it's fine. Uh, eventually I found the thing, and apparently it was called Green Salt. I remember finding it, and the host was walking by, so I stashed it and then woke up. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Greens. Oh, I missed part two. I overheard some of the producers talking about the thing and it was apparently a cure to something and I ended up somehow almost finding it and the host got really mad because I wasn't supposed to and it was green salt. All right. I mean, there's pink Himalayan salt, so I'd, I wouldn't be surprised if there was green salt too. Yeah, there's lots of different colors of salt, methinks. Now the fun thing with this one is like this is in like the shade so there isn't like a light source per se that I'm going to be working off of. I mean I could shade a little bit here. Sorry, my headphones keep hitting against the microphone. <laughs> What's my favorite hobby other than art? I like video games. <laughs> I like playing video games in my, in my spare time. I don't remember where I was transported to, but I had a dream where I was transported to different worlds or something. I was so confused when I woke up. That's real. Uh, most of my dreams are the kind where it feels like I'm not dreaming because it's so close to reality until something super unrealistic happens and I'm like, that can't be real. My dreams are always very non-real. Like, they're very, very trippy, usually. I tell them to my partner and, and they're always like... <laughs> they're always like, Jess, <laughs> I, I'm not really following. <laughs> um... But, um, I don't lucid dream. My mother does, but I don't. I'm like, she's so lucky she gets to lucid dream. I'm usually pretty aware that my dreams are dreams, but I just let the dream do its thing. That's real. Let's see if this reflection will actually look good. Kind of works. Eh, not really though. I'm like, because th there isn't really a light source that I'm going off of for this one because it's in the shade. Like, I could totally just, like, ignore every principle ever and just give it a light source anyway, but I'm like, it feels, feels wrong to do that, you know? Something feels off about that. <laughs> I don't dream, I just think about something I'd like to dream about until I fall asleep. Just nothing until I wake up. 
makes one of us. I got those, I got those lucid, or not lucid, sorry. I got those wacky dreams. Oh, that looks better. There we go. It's a reflection of the leaf itself. Oh, cool. Wait, that's vibes. That looks cool. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm at the point where I'm just kind of like messing around with how I'm drawing these things. I like that. That's, that's sweet. That looks, that looks like a cool reflection actually. Nice. One dream I had, I was stuck in an elevator and every time I pressed a button, the elevator would stop in a Disney cartoon. Strangely enough, I woke up. I was in Neverland. Oh. <laughs> I even had like go-to dreams I would see over and over again. Like recurring dreams? <coughs> oh God, sorry. Sorry, water went down the wrong way. That's not nice. Let's do like one more droplet because we're kind of... Oh, let's do like some normal brain drops as well. Let's use some like normal dew drops then we can have them for like comparison. To like the big ones, to like the scary ones. Because, you know, there are still normal rain droplets, it's just like the rare ones. I had a dream where my coach asked me for a bunch of favors and each one was slightly less legal. Last favor he asked for was one of my kidneys. I was like, okay. <laughs> you were just so willing to give a kidney. That's crazy. <laughs> you know what? Dream logic. I understand. Maybe some kind of mimic then? Maybe. I don't know. That would make sense, I guess. Because then if it's like, if they're not really related to the clouds and they're meant to kind of like look like the rain drops would not really be right but they're still made of water so maybe it's like something that happened to them on the way down i don't know kind of crazy water water mimic <laughs> that would be so scary actually if there was like a mimic like imagine like your D, D game and there's like rain that's like a mimic or like if there's like water that's a mimic like oh i'm gonna go drink this water it'd be so safe like a it's like, oh, it's running water. It's like, it should be fine. You go to drink it and it jumps out at you. Horrifying. That would be terrifying. Kind of sick, though. You know what? Kind of kind of fire. <laughs> Wait, though. I know I'm in a cage with one kidney and he's sitting in a chair and he does the evil chair spin. He's wearing the most BBEG fit ever. Trench coat, eye patch, and everything. Amazing. Been addicted to Baldur's Gate 3. I have a whole Google Doc lore from my bard dwarf Archie. Oh my god, amazing. Baldur's Gate is a great game. make a really interesting horror campaign dude i my campaign that i'm in right now has such has like really cool horror themes i'm it's such a vibe i love horror
So he tries to find a sticky note because I messed up the coloring pain. Raindrops are kind of fun to draw. I'm like, usually I find them boring, but I'm like, you know what? This is actually, this is kind of fun. <laughs> I'm kind of enjoying just rendering these out because I don't really get to render that frequently. So I'm like, you know what? Like, yeah, you know what? This is kind of a vibe. I'm kind of vibing with just painting raindrops. <laughs> It's kind of interesting how they're able to just stick to things. Like I watched one crawl around on the on the program that night, and like they're kind of just able to stick to anything, even though they're like made of water and they feel like water. Well, okay, I keep saying that they're made of water, but it was like it, it like they're they kept referring to it as a water-like substance that they are that they feel like, and I'm like, all right, well, it's kind of just water, but. They're saying that they are they feel like a water-like substance. Um even though it's not totally water. <laughs> it's pretty neat. It's cool stuff, cool beans. Finishing up my dark urge root. I'm, I'm, oh, your dirge root. I'm a paladin of vengeance. Ah, paladin of vengeance. In actual D&D, my, my best friend played a paladin of vengeance. He turned into the BBEG. SMH my head. <laughs> we all had it. To be fair, we all had it coming. <laughs> all the signs were there and we're like, no, he's our friend. And, you know. To be fair, he wasn't, like, evil from the start. It was just he, he ended up getting possessed, so... You know, not not a vibe. <laughs> I mean, it was a vibe. It was it was cool. <laughs> it's a mage. The Earth Dome theory is partially correct. It's just a massive raindrop. That would be crazy. I feel like we would all be like burning pretty badly if it was true, though. It's, you know, acidity. Uh, is it possible to get him back, or is he just deaf? Oh. Wait, what? Oh, is he just dead? So raindrops come from regular rain. I can only imagine one's from acid rain. I know, right? Because then they would be like, they would be like ultra lethal. I have never experienced acid rain before. I feel like I always heard about it in like shows and like TV, and like I was never like. I've never actually experienced it. Has anybody in here actually experienced acid rain? Because I'm like, I feel like I heard about it all the time, but it was just a never a thing that like affected me. I was just like, yep, it's never, never, never occurred to me. Same, right? I'm like, I, I genuinely like, I, I feel like I've heard about them from everywhere, but I've never actually like experienced acid rain i'm like i'm kind of like i don't know if it's real <laughs> i'm like it's definitely real like there are accounts of it but i'm like i'm like i don't know man i'm like i've never seen it like is it actually like first earthquake yesterday oh yeah no i mean i've never i've also never experienced an earthquake 
like where I'm at, there's no like tectonic plates, I guess. It's like there's nothing really close to me that does that. So I'm like pretty good from up here. I never heard of it besides like two games. Really? I, I feel like I heard about it everywhere. Used to be a thing, but not anymore. Where does it occur? I don't know. It used to be a more extreme occurrence. <laughs> I need to find new fingers and new brains. Okay. They've been reduced by a lot. Really? I'm gonna go look it up. I'm curious. I'm gonna go look it up. Um. Acid rain. Our acid deposition is a broad term that includes any form of precipitation with acidic components such as sulfuric or nitric acid that fall from the ground into the atmosphere in wet or dry forms. When does acid rain happen? When did acid rain happen? First identified in North America at Hubbard Brook in the mid-1960s and later shown to result from long-range transport of sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides from power plants. Hubbard Brook research influenced national and international acid rain policies, including the 1990 Clear Air Act amendments. Oh, okay. So it was like a thing they kind of just took care of. Heaven and cities, a lot of smog and pollutants. Makes sense. <laughs> Sleeping and it woke me up. Uh, yeah, I heard. I heard about it too. I was just like, I it didn't. It didn't happen to me. I was like, just out of its range, I guess. Four point seven meg, just a weird shake for a few minutes. Yeah, I heard. It was a bit strange. Should have gone under a table. That's also what I was always told. It's like, oh, earthquake happening, go under a table. I was taught these things, but once again, never experienced an earthquake. So, I've never needed to put it into practice. <laughs> it's just so satisfying. It's just like... so cool it's so, <laughs> it's so satisfying to just draw the <laughs> those raindrops thank you hello holly ghost cat i heard doorways are safer because of load bearing walls i wouldn't know the ones with the eyes or legs of the eggs no those are just normal raindrops we get very mild earthquakes every couple of years, but never got told to get under a table. I got told to go outside and stay clear from anything that could fall on me. That's also really smart. Like if you if you're in the middle of an earthquake and you're in like a middle of a field, that's probably like the safest place you could be, <laughs> where there's nothing that can fall on you. It's just like a flat land. Like that's really, that's that's probably one of the safest places you could be during an earthquake, if I had to guess.
animating right now nice i want to poke one we said it earlier they're super acidic or like they're pretty acidic so like they're they're not great to like consume or like to touch or anything like that like ph4 it's not great not like skin burning acidic but like definitely enough to where it'll make you sick you know with a pencil there you go <laughs> one fell off no it's just it's just uh field notes I love drawing weird hands. There's just something really satisfying or really fun about having like the idea of a hand and then it not actually coming to fruition. I don't even know what an earthquake should feel like anymore because they happen so frequently here unless they knock in things over. It's just another Saturday to me. That's crazy. <laughs> I think they're friends with frogs. I don't know. Again, like I saw what one did to a cat. So I'm like, I feel like, I feel like it would be bad if like it met up with a, with a frog, you know, because if it can do that to a cat, I can't imagine what it did to a frog, what it would do to a frog. I'm like, I can't really talk about it again, to, kind of TOS, but you know. Kind of scary. Excited for 80 stream tomorrow. Yippee! Wouldn't be surprised if they appeared in a Ghibli movie for some reason. You know what they are? They're kind of giving the... Um, like when I saw them on, on Nat Geo, they were kind of giving like... Um, you know in Ponyo? Like the, the big fish that she's like walking on <laughs> while she's getting out of the ocean? Like that. They kinda, they're kind of giving that. I don't know what's happening, but I love it. We're kind of just talking about raindrops. Um, there was like a late night Nat Geo episode and they were talking about like uh, raindrops, like the invasive species. So we're kind of going off of that. Thought I would make a piece based on that. Because late night Nat Geo is just cooler than actual Nat Geo. Like, that's just true. Want to work on rendering in live Iggy's stream? I've been having a lot of fun rendering in my sketchbook and ballpoint pen. Working in ballpoint pen is so fun. Should have known better, I guess. No, no, like it wasn't like um, it, it's kind of terrible. Like I love Midnight Not Geo, but like them having like test subjects is not nice. Like they they had like a couple of raindrops in captivity, and like they kind of just threw a cat in there, and I was like, no, oh, but why? You know, it's not nice, but. They're kind of they're kind of weird, that station. Maybe that's where they got the inspiration from Ponyo for these little guys. Oh maybe. Maybe Miyazaki had them in his garden or something. <laughs> Sorry, it's something bothering me. Poor cat, yeah. I 
I'm abandoned pencils. I only sketch in ink. I I sketch in ink sometimes. I sketch in pencil sometimes. I'm just a huge sucker for graphite. So I'm like, I love graphite. Try looking up the last known case of acid rain. I mean, they said that like they, they started to die out in the, the 1990s. So I'm like, I assume they'd kind of been like gone around their 90s, early 2000s. And here's the meme is that this one didn't take long at all. I thought it would actually take me a lot longer. <laughs> so I might be able to just vibe for a little bit of stream. to me please uh gosh what's this font um brandon grotesque thank you drawing nice if you see Jeremy again sure here you go there's Jeremy in the little tutorial section find it easier to sketch on pencil do the line art and color digitally a lot of people do that that's kind of like a that's a very common um very common workflow I love Jeremy. So true. Okay, genuinely, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> I'm like, I've kind of finished this a bit early. Cause I'm like, I don't want to just keep on like painting raindrops. This person, the cloud concept also Jeremy, maybe. We can also have him be Jeremy. Where are the clouds? I haven't seen the clouds in a while. I haven't opened up that stream in a while. Oh, I did two illustrations. That's that's how I filled in the cloud time. <laughs> I did two illustrations for this one. Because the clouds are so cool. Yeah, there it is. The adult cloud is a lot taller than the adolescent one. A lot larger. Because it's true. Because yeah, clouds burn, so it's like, like if clouds burn and if like the raindrops burn, you'd think that they'd be like related, right? Be a background? I don't know. I don't really feel like painting in a background. <laughs> I'm kind of like I kind of just want to leave it like this, you know? It, it, there's something vibey about it. God, it's so haunting it's so beautiful yeah like the other like when we when we did the cloud stream when i was talking about that nat geo episode it was like the clouds are like they're like they scream sometimes and like the it's like you don't want to touch them because they'll burn to the touch if you acknowledge them too much they'll try and like grab you it's like a whole thing And here's the thing is that like the, the raindrops are so similar so it's so strange that they like don't have a connection like just based on like what we know about both like it just seems like logical that they would right yeah 
Yeah, I wish I could catch a cloud, but the two fast one because of the best, because people often have to poach clouds. Yeah, no, like, you shouldn't... That was also a thing. It was, like, the poaching. Like, you don't want to poach the clouds, because then the adults are going to come after you, and, like, obviously, like, you're not going to survive after that. Right. If you're going to go look at the clouds, it was, like, a whole thing, where, like, they, they like, recommended that you bring a friend with you, because, like... <laughs> or not a friend, but maybe somebody who's, like, a little bit slower than you, you know? Bring an enemy, I guess. So then, like, maybe if you, if you wanted to observe them up close, you can, like, observe them that way, you know? Hi, okay. guys. Like, somebody who you can volunteer to be... Yeah. Uh, a friend to the clouds. <laughs> you know? See the one who makes 3 I'm not Geo? I don't know who makes 3 I'm not Geo. Like, they kind of just, like... So he's in all the drawings? I don't know. I, like, I thought I thought you guys created Jeremy. I, like, I just kind of draw him over and over. One of those drawings of biology books. Thank you. It's kind of what I'm going for. I'm kind of going for, like, the, like, the field note vibe. Yeah, Jeremy's the host of 3AM, not Geo. I genuinely don't know who hosts it because, like, again, like, Ed, like I could be watching anything. I could, it could be like, I could be watching TV. I could be like on my computer, like I'm watching YouTube or something, and then suddenly, like, it all switches to like not Geo, and I'm like, oh, okay, I guess I'm watching another episode now, and then it goes on for like an hour, and then I'm forcibly put to sleep. Like, it's like it, it doesn't matter. Like, like for those of you who like watch it, right? You know what I mean? Like, it's like you. You watch it for an hour and then the episode ends and then it's like you can like just not keep your eyes open they're just like yep it's time to go to bed and i'm like all right and like some i've kind of learned to like if if it's like certain nights if i see the nat geo episode start playing i automatically move to my bed because i'm like okay if i'm gonna fall asleep i might as well fall asleep like comfortable right so it's like the episode starts playing and then i watch it and then once it's done i like go back to sleep and then it's like it doesn't exist it's crazy Maybe Jeremy was the friends we made along the way. When I was a super small kid, I used to think they screamed because they wanted a hug. So my mom had to put locks up high on the doors. I wouldn't try to go out in the rain and hug them. It's really funny. <laughs> that's kind of a- Yeah, that's like- It's like that thing, like they- Like with the clouds as well. It's like you gotta teach your kids while they're young. Cause it's like, they, yeah, they look fluffy. But like you shouldn't give them hugs even if they reach their arms to you. Have a good one, kiddo. So raindrops have negative effects on aquatic creatures? No, we were actually talking about that. So they're, like, the one of the safest places you can be from raindrops is in the ocean. Because, like, their body, they can't coalesce their bodies in the water because they kind of just spread out. So, like, if they hit the ocean, they're not dead per se, but they can, they have to find land to re-coalesce in. And, like, that's really tough for them. So, like, they don't really, they kind of just disperse in the water. Make sure to keep my cat safe from the raindrops, yeah. <laughs> Gotta keep him safe. One time I tried to record on my phone the episode of 3AM Not Geo, but I woke up and the audio was all buggy and I couldn't see anything. Yeah, yeah, I've noticed that too. I think I tried to like screen record at one point and like my OBS kept crashing. It just, it wouldn't work. And then I tried to pull up my phone and like same thing. It was just like fuzzy. I couldn't see anything. It was nuts, it was weird. Okay, I genuinely don't know what to keep drawing. <laughs> so, like, should I... You guys want to do some just, like, doodle requests? And I'll have this open off to the side. Have a good night, Ava. What if they attach to you when you resurface? That's kind of crazy. That that would be that would be pretty bad. A lily pad? I don't know. I don't really feel like drawing lily pads. I haven't seen any Nat Geo stuff on lily pads yet, so... Jeremy. More Jeremy. Okay. Let's do some let's do some really quick doodle requests. Um, please keep in mind that I am allowed to say no to absolutely anything. If I don't feel like doing it, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> Here's the raindrop. CP. Corn, I will always say yes to drawing corn. <laughs> will always say yes to drawing my son.
Also got a front-facing corn, sure. <laughs> I actually haven't drawn front-facing corn in a really long time. Tabaxi. Hello, Bullet Boom. What's happening? Uh, I did a, like, a whole, like, I talked about, like, 3 I'm not Geo for a while and drew, like, the raindrops that I saw on there. Um, and now I'm just kind of doing some really light doodle requests because I finished the illustration a little bit early. Nice, yeah. Yeah, maybe if we have a lily pad stream, I'll have, I'll have seen a, an episode of 3M not Geo on them by then. Who knows? They kind of just happen at random, and I'm never ready for it. <laughs> the only kind of preparation I can have is I'm like, oh, alright, it's starting, time to move to my bed so I can fall asleep in a good position. You only make that mistake like twice. Because it happens once and you're like, oh, haha, no way that it's gonna happen again, and then it does, and you're like too stunned to move. It's pretty sweet. They're so fascinating. They really are. Can I doodle a little cat? Yeah. You want to see how I draw little cats? <laughs> Wait, I've heard a scar. Cat. Ten frames down to twenty-five. Nice. Like falling asleep in random spots. Ah, that makes one of us. <laughs> Cause I have bad back problems, so I wanna have to deal with that. Every time it's a late night match, Geo, I just let the chips fall away they may. No, I couldn't. Foster check, thank you. I am indeed sitting up though. I have um I have my child here with me. The greatest cow, one of the greatest cow plushies I've ever seen in my life. You guys want to see him? I'm not going to turn on my camera because I look gross right now. But like, you want to hang on. Uh... You guys need to see the greatest cow plushie of all time. All right. Please look at the greatest cow plush of all time. This is truly the cow plush of all time. All right. I love him so much. I have this one. All right. I bought it as a gift to myself. And I just, he has a heat pack in the back that you can microwave. And it becomes like a, like a warm pack that helps like a cramp pack. It helps with like, like cramps. And like you can press it against your stomach and it's so warm. I love him. He's so cute. I have one. His name is Yakult. Like the like the the Chinese like probiotic yogurt drink. <laughs> you can what? <laughs> yes, microwave. You can microwave the, the 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 heat pack. And she had phones. Yeah, I love cows, dude. Uh Corn doesn't really have a favorite animal. He just kind of likes all animals.
been trying to front facing corn in a very long time. Oh, this is kind of cute, actually. <laughs> I used to draw so much dopier, I guess. It's just like the. He's not really a dopey character anymore, so like. You mean do it for you? No, his face is not that long actually. It gets longer as he gets older, but no, he's he's his face is actually quite quite short. He is essentially I want one. He's so cute. A frog? I can do a frog. <laughs> Again. <laughs> frog. It's the only way I know how to draw frogs, honestly. <laughs> Goodness. Frog it literally inflates its body. I would believe that. I know that rain frogs do like a like a weird thing. Like they can't swim and they can't hop very well, but they can burrow really well. Koala or crocodile? I can do a crocodile. I like crocs more than koalas. Crocodile. I just need to look at one real quick. <laughs> Let me do this. Let me pop out the chat really quickly so I can still see you guys while I go look at references. Love Crocs. I had to draw a case and my partner um, played as a, uh, a lizard folk um, that was like very crocodilian. And like he said, like the way that I drew it was really crocodilian, a little not enough lizard folk. <laughs> So I was like, ah, shoot. Um, but it is still, like, one of my favorite. Like, I, I drew it and I was like, man, this rocks. And then he said it was wrong and I was like, oh, shoot. Um, 565, I believe that's on its side. Load, please. Oh, I love Kaiman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, you see? so cool i was like i felt really bad i felt I, I was like i had to cover up most of his scales because like he had like clothes on obviously but like it was really fun to draw a croc dude i love drawing crocodiles <laughs> crocs thanks <laughs> he's really cool dude i was like i love drawing crocodiles this is like my first proper proper crocodile and it, it felt it was really really fun rock so much yeah man I don't know if I'll be able to do it as good for a stream because I'm like, my, my attention is kind of focused elsewhere, but. You can have like a more cartoony one. Baby crocs are so cute. I love baby crocodiles. So, so cute.
Crocodile. Well, dude. Need to get more Pokemon plushies. I'm addicted. I have I have a Blitzel and a Venipede sitting next to me because those are like two of my favorite Pokemon ever. And I want a life-sized Venipede. I want like one that I can like hold and is the same size as a normal Venipede, so like a foot long. Like I want I want a life-size Venipede. <laughs> Oh, Venipede so much. Centaur bug. That's Scolipede. Scolipede is the centaur bug. Venipede is the small one. Venipede is the first evolution. But I also love Scolipede with my entire being. Scolipede, the centaur, like, centipede thing is so cool. But Venipede is the little one. Venipede is this little guy. Venipede is little. Love Venipede. Downside of my favorite Pokemon being Machamp is that's weird to have a plushie of him. <laughs> it's only weird if you make it weird. He's still a Pokemon. I love Venipede. I love Scolipede. I am a huge fan of, of Blitzel. Blitzel is like my everything. Because I'm just... It's really easy to draw Blitzel. <laughs> it's like he's a horse, Jesse. Yeah, he's really easy to draw. You must understand that I grew up with My Little Pony. Horses, no issue for me. You can feel it. You can feel it in the art style <laughs> that I grew up with. My little pony. Like, it is palpable. Like, how obvious it is. You know? Snom for life. Love Snom. Love Inkay as well. It's bug poison. Yeah, man. Bug type's my favorite type, dude. Also, drew a lot of MLP. Yeah, man. <laughs> That's the vibe. These front legs are a little too large, but yeah. I I, I learned how to draw horses uh, from my little pony, which is the correct way to learn. <laughs> I'm kidding. All right, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining. That is five o'clock. Um, thank you all so much for joining me for the raindrop stream, for letting me um, practice my improv skills on you. <laughs> and thank you for playing. Thank you for playing along with the bit. Very fun uh, to chat about raindrops and their possible overtaking of the human race. Um, but thank you all so, so much for joining today. Um, if you don't know too much about us, don't know too much about the studio, hey. Or Wayne Canvas, we're our channel. If you'd like to check out more about us, WayneCanvas.com. We have classes, summer camps coming up. Um, I believe early registration is open right now. Save 5% using code EARLYNERD. Um, and you can sign up for summer camps that are coming up. This file that you see in front of me, you can get the JPEG on Discord, exclamation point Discord. I'll be uploading that so that you can keep this file if you'd like, plus the lesson that we did earlier. You can take a look at that and kind of just show, look over the steps <laughs> that I did uh, pretty easily. Um, but if you would like my working files, anything with layers, you're going to have to join our Patreon, Patreon, or become a YouTube member. Other things that you can do as a YouTube member, class recordings, behind the scenes content, early access stuff. Um, and then also you can access uh, instructor... Uh, instructor office hours. Uh, me personally, I go into a call on Wednesdays um, and we can all just chat and you can give me your work to critique live um, for about an hour. So, hey, right, that's pretty neat. Some cool incentive to be a member or to be a Patreon member or YouTube member. But all right, this Sunday, what are you guys doing this Sunday? 
Let's take a look, see here. This Sunday, you guys- Ooh! Tomorrow, you guys are gonna be having a stream with Iggy. He's gonna be fixing your rendered illustrations. That's gonna be real neat. Those are always a great time. Love those kinds of streams. And then after that, you guys are gonna have Faye. Faye, who is going to be drawing realistic hair for you guys, uh, traditionally on stream. Uh, that'll be next week, Saturday. Um, but all right. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. And I'll see y'all in a couple weeks. Au revoir. Bye-bye.